church and our Sunday worship this morning. I'm glad that you're here to worship with us today. It is still the season of Easter and we're celebrating the resurrection of the Lord. In spite of the fact that we are quarantined and locked down and whatever else is going on, we know that our Lord lives and therefore because he lives, we too shall live. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, whatever this world throws at us, it's all right because our Savior lives. Service today is, uh, you can download a copy of it off of our website, or it will be posted in the live stream. Um, prayer requests, please post your prayer requests in the live stream as well. We are taking prayer requests this morning. We're going to begin our service by singing a good uh, Easter hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Uh, if you're up for it, let's stand and join together in our song this morning. Blessings on our worship today. Almighty God, before whose presence the angels veil their faces with reverence and love, we acknowledge your glory and worship you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, eternal Trinity. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And we join in the hymn verse.
gather together in worship then, we come before our, our Lord that we would confess our unworthiness, that we would confess our sins and plead for his mercy and his forgiveness. And so we'll do that this morning with our confession. O holy and most merciful Father, we confess that from birth our sinful nature has made us unfit to stand before you. What is more, we have broken your law repeatedly in our thoughts, our words, and our actions. So often we do the evil you forbid and fail to do the good you command. You know our hearts and our lives, Lord. We are guilty and deserve only to be condemned. But at your gracious word we come to you and plead, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. The Lord, our gracious Father, has forgiven all your sins, but through the life and death of his one and only Son, Jesus the Christ, with his resurrection from death, he has given you the sure hope of everlasting life. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. So go now and leave the life of sin and produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father who is in heaven. Amen. We join in the verses. to us today in his word and our first lesson for today is psalm number one it's a psalm that talks about the power uh, of god's word about god's word and the ability uh, to to mm, give us life to to nurture us to guide us to bless us we read psalm one this is what is written blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous, for the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Says the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second lesson is recorded in Peter's first epistle. He talks to us about the hope that we have because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. First Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 17. This is what is written. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, Live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life, handed down from, to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. 
Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, so that your faith and hope are in God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue by confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If we continue with our next hymn, it's Christ the Robes. Heavenly Father, give you thanks for the day and the opportunity to gather around your word. Though we aren't gathered in person, we are gathered, Lord, as your children. We've gathered because we need your guidance, we need your blessing, we need your forgiveness, we need your love. As we meditate this morning, pray, Lord God, that you would bless us with that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, been a lot of strange things going on lately. I, I attended something that I had never attended before. I attended a, a Zoom birthday party. It was kind of weird. It was fine. We all sang 
happy birthday and we lit the candles and we watched the birthday boy blow out the candles but then we all sat around and watched the birthday boy eat his cake and ice cream and it was kind of weird because where was my cake and where was my ice cream that's what birthdays are all about Ma no I'm just I even heard about drive through birthday parties and how odd and strange that would be. There's a lot of things that are just odd. You think about seniors in high school and all of the things that they missed out on because of this whole quarantine and coronavirus thing. No graduation, no spring sports, they're all canceled. Maybe there'll be a graduation, but they'll have it in what, August? Who knows what? It's confusing. You have plans and you make plans and you try and set things up, but it all gets canceled because of everything that's going on. My daughter Rachel, scheduled to be confirmed in a couple of weeks. We had the whole thing planned out. Family was coming. We're going to have a big party. Well, now it's, it's postponed indefinitely. Maybe she'll never be confirmed. I'm looking at her right now and she's giving me a goofy smile. This whole thing has messed a lot of stuff up. Confusion about what the future is going to be, when we can do what, what we can do, and when we can do it, and where we can do it. Rumors flying around about whether or not this is really happening, or this is really the truth, or what's going on. Plans that you had made, hopes and dreams that you had set out that are just up in the air. Stress and worry about job, and economy, and government, and this, and that, and... Sometimes we think that all of the things that we're going through with this coronavirus were the only ones in the history of the world who have ever had to go through it. And maybe we're the only ones who have ever gone through this exact thing. But ever since the fall into sin, this world has canceled things, has interrupted things, has caused problems, has stressed mankind out. Mankind has been dealing with these issues since sin first came into the world. And it was true of those first disciples too. We meet a couple of them today, they're on a road, and, and Jesus appears to them and, he, and he, they're, they're confused about what's going on. They've heard all these rumors, they don't know what's happening. They had thought, they had plans, they had ideas of what the future was going to be like and they were all just canceled. And Jesus comes to them and he comforts them and he guides them. And we're going to look at that. Last Sunday, the disciples were quarantined. They were locked up in their own house for fear of the Jews. The Jews had come after Jesus. They had crucified Jesus. And for out of fear, they locked themselves in their own house, quarantined themselves away for fear of what might happen to them. And Jesus appears to them and he says to them, what? Peace be with you. He says it twice, peace be with you. And he promised them, guaranteed them peace, peace that he won through death on the cross, through his resurrection, peace with God. And if I have peace with God, then whatever this world throws at me, I can handle because I know that my God is with me, that he loves me, that he forgives me. Today, there's another set of disciples who decided to break quarantine. They, they left all the other disciples and they were on the road, walking down the road. They'd probably gotten a ticket if it, if it was during quarantine today. But they're walking down the road and they're, they're confused about everything. They had hoped, we, it reads, they had hoped that Jesus was the Messiah, but then he was crucified. They had hoped that he was going to change the world. That they, they had hoped that they had found something, but now he's crucified and he's dead. And it's been three days and now there's this rumor going around that the body is missing. What is going on? Their plans for the future were canceled. Their, their whole way of doing things had been changed. Rumors flying around. Their hearts were downcast. And as they're walking along the road, up comes Jesus. He, he masks himself so that they don't know that it's him. And Jesus comes up alongside of them and he asks them, what are they talking about? And they're, they're incredulous. What do you mean, what are we talking about? You've been living in a cave? you got your head in a hole in the ground? Don't you know what's going on? Imagine someone coming up to you and saying, 
why are there no cards on the road? And you say, where have you been? We're under quarantine. Same idea. And they say, we had hope. Jesus tells them the whole story about how Jesus was crucified and dead. And now there's these rumors going around. And I want you to listen to what Jesus does to build up these disciples who are struggling. I want you to listen to where he takes them. and How he encourages them in their distress, in their downcastness, in their confusion. Luke chapter 24 Beginning it with verse 25, Jesus is speaking. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further farther but they urged him strongly stay with us for it is nearly evening the day is almost over so he went in to stay with them when he was at the table with them he took bread gave thanks broke it and gave it to them then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight they asked each other were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened scriptures to us this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Where did Jesus take them? Here they were. Their, their, their dreams for the future had been shattered. Their whole world was turned upside down. They were downcast because every, everything that was going on, there was all these rumors flying around, confusion about what is taking place. And Jesus takes them where? To the scriptures. To the Bible to the truths of God's word and the promises of God's word. And he began to open, it must have been quite the Bible study, right? He starts to pull a passage from here, one from Isaiah, one from over here. And he starts putting them all together into this, into this Bible class and he opens up scriptures to them and explains to them, look, all of this was part of God's plan. God knew exactly what he was doing and this was all things that had to take place so that God could rescue mankind from their own sins. So that God would make a way for mankind to be with him in heaven forever. This was all part of God's plan. And as, as Jesus opened the scriptures to them and began to explain the truths of God's word, we hear that their hearts were burning within them. We're not talking about heartburn. He's talking here about a burning, living faith, a hope, a joy that was welling up inside of them because of the truths of God's word, because of the promises that God had made, and what that meant to them in their confusion and in, their, in, 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 their, uh, in the state that they were in. And as Jesus opened scriptures to them, their eyes were opened, their hearts were filled with joy. Because all of their doubts were driven away. Because their confusion was made clear. A couple of things for us to take away from this section of scripture. I think one is just the reassurance that Jesus really did rise from the grave and win salvation for us. That you and I are no longer in our sins. Jesus was dead and he is alive and he rose again and appeared to these disciples. But the second thing second thing for you and me to think about today is the power of God's word. You see what it did with these two disciples. We don't know who they are. We don't really, well, William one we know is Cleopas. We don't know anything more about him. But we do know that they were downcast. They were struggling. They were confused. They were, their, their plans had been canceled. And they, their whole lives were turned upside down. And yet when Jesus began to explain the truth of his word and the promises of his word, their hearts were set on fire. Their, their spirits and souls were lifted. The power of God's word. So often in life, there's all these things that trouble us and bother us and stress us out. Relationships with, our, with people at work and something happening on the job and this with the government and that rumor flying around and issues with our children and issues with our parents who just don't seem to get us. And 
God gave us his word and put his power and his blessing in his word to help us deal with all of the nonsense that this world throws at us. God put, he gave us his word to bless us, to guide us, to help us, to forgive us, to strengthen us, to deal with all of the things that this world throws at us. And it doesn't make any sense when we don't take advantage of it. I get these headaches. And uh, over the years I've learned how to deal with my headaches. But I'm not very good at dealing with it. And I, don't, I can't quite explain to you why I am the way that I am. But I'll get a headache and I'll moan about it and complain about it and whine about it and oh it's terrible and I can't do this. And after about half an hour or an hour of that my wife gets sick and tired of me whining and moaning and complaining and she says to me, did you take your medicine? And I don't know why I don't take my medicine. I got these pills that I take, it helps take away my headache, 20 minutes later I'm okay. But for whatever reason I will fight that headache, I'll deal with that headache, I'll moan and whine and complain about that headache. But when the time comes, I don't take the medicine until my wife says, did you take your medicine? Then I take the medicine and I'm fine. What's the point of dealing with that headache, griping and moaning and whining about it when I have the medicine to help me do it? That's the whole thing with God's word. We have these struggles in life, these things that we don't like, these things that we're not happy with. These, these issues that we're having. And God gave us the solution, the answer, the blessing, the, the guidance and the strength that we need to deal with all of them in his word. And yet sometimes we don't take advantage of the very thing that God gave us to help us deal with it. And maybe, maybe during quarantine is the time for us to pick back up our Bibles and dust them off a little bit. To read God's word. To allow his promises and his truth to guide us, to direct us, to, to forgive us, to bless us, and help us overcome all of the nonsense that we have going on. doesn't make any sense that I sit here and I complain or I struggle or I, 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 I fight against this thing or that thing, but I don't take advantage of the one thing that God has given me to help me deal with it, and that's his word, his promises, his truth. And not just to read the words, okay, good, I read it, now I can forget about it all day, but let the words and promises of God, the truth of God, direct your day. God says this, so that's how I'm going to live today, and that's what I'm going to believe. The power of God. The power of God's word that he has given to us and put in our hands. My brothers and sisters, this is strange time. And there's stress, and there's anxiety, and there's issues, and there's tension. Go to God's word. Let his promises speak to your heart. Let his truth guide and direct the way that you live, and the way that you approach, and the way that you deal with all the things that are going on in life doesn't make any sense to sit there and struggle and to gripe and to moan, but not take advantage of the one thing, the great thing, the power of God that he has given to us in his word. So be in it. Read his word. Watch how he helps you overcome and deal with the struggles in your own heart and the struggles in your own mind and the struggles in your, the relationships in your life. His word is power. And he has given us his word to bless us. My brothers and sisters, I don't know all the issues that you're wrestling with. I don't know all the problems that you have. I don't know all the anxieties that are there and all the things that weigh on your mind. But I do know that strength, that wisdom, that, that power, that answers to all of our issues are found in Jesus' word. Pick up your Bible and read it and then believe it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. We continue our service by singing our next hymn, a hymn that prayer to God that through his word he would speak to our hearts and lives. 
If you're up for it, let's stand and join together in our next song, Speak, O Lord. Uh, yeah, Speak, O Lord. to the Lord. Can't be here to bring your offering, but encourage you to go online and um, you can you can donate through our website. Uh, love to have you give uh, support the ministry of Living Hope Lutheran Church. Also, you can go have a seat. Thank you, Boo. Also, uh, prayers. Encourage you to write in your prayer requests this morning. We will be taking prayer requests and praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, to put those in the live stream. My daughter is writing them down, and we'll pray through those in a minute. Let's, uh, let's join together in our time of prayer. Um, and we're going to sing some, some uh, verse beforehand, and we'll sing a verse after. Uh, let, let's bow our heads and join together in prayer.
God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for sending your Son to win our salvation, for conquering sin and death through his death on the cross and through his resurrection. Help us every day, Lord God, to know that we are your dearly loved, forgiven children, even as we battle through this and we battle depression and confusion and frustration. Help us to remember that we are your loved children. Pray, Lord God, and thank you also for your word to guide us. Forgive us for the times that we have not taken advantage of the blessing of your word, that we haven't listened to what you had to say, that we haven't sought guidance from your word. Teach us, Lord God, that when there is hardship, when there is trouble, when there is confusion, teach us to run to your word, to find strength and peace and forgiveness and guidance and your spirit, Lord God. We bring you, Lord God, some special prayers. We start by praying, Lord God, for a family friend of Deb Ramsey uh, battling dementia. Pray, Lord God, that you would be with him and comfort him and take away his confusion. Be with that whole family, Lord God, and pray that you would bless them as they struggle, uh, as they deal with all the confusion that's going on. Pray, Lord God, and give you thanks for the 16 years of life that you have given to Haley and all those who are celebrating birthdays. Uh, Pray, Lord God, that you would bless them and uh, be with them in this new year. Pray, thank you for the blessings that you gave to them this last year. Pray, Lord God, that you would watch over them this coming year. Uh, we also pray, Lord God, for the Boucher's new nephew, Caleb, who's healthy. Uh, thank God for bringing him safely through delivery, him and mom. Pray, Lord God, that you would bless their recovery. And thank you for that gift of life. Pray that you would be with um, um, be with mom and dad as they raise up Caleb in the way of the Lord. Give them strength, Lord God. Um, also, thank you, Lord God, for the years of life that you have given to Carmen and to me. My birthday is tomorrow. Thank you, Lord God, for all of those, those years of life that you have given. Pray for Carol Bilo's friend, Nancy. Okay, her, uh, uh, her granddaughter took her own life on Friday, so granddaughter's name was Crystal. Pray, Lord God, for Nancy and family as they work to uh, make sense out of uh, the difficult time. Pray, Lord God, that you would be with them. Pray that they would find some comfort and some answers in your promises and your love. We don't understand uh, why Crystal would take her own life. Pray, Lord God, that you would be with that family, that you would bless them and take care of them and guide them. Pray that all of us would learn to value life as a gift from you. Every day, every minute is a gift of your grace. Teach us to watch out for those who are in trouble. Watch out for those who are depressed. Watch out for those who aren't doing so well. And then give us, Lord God, a heart to reach out to them. And to build them up in your love and in your promises. Pray for Josh Lepus as he travels back to Utah. Be with him as he goes, Lord God. Pray that you would send your angels to guard him and protect him. Uh, Pray that his journey would go well and that he would reach there safely. Pray for Rebecca Boniak. Uh, this is an alumni of Rocky Mount Lutheran High School who tested positive for COVID-19. Pray, Lord God, that you would be with Rebecca and that you would help her to recover quickly. Take away her, her illness, Lord God. Spare her life. All those who are wrestling with this disease, Lord God, we commit them to your care and ask, Lord God, if it is your will that you would heal them. Take away their illness, Lord God. Restore their health. Uh, be with the doctors and the nurses and all who care for them, Lord God. Keep them safe and give them strength and wisdom to help us recover. Um, also pray for safety for Sharon and her husband Jim as they travel back from Arizona. Pray, Lord God, that you would guide them on the way. Send your angels to guard them, protect them, and make sure that they reach home here safely, Lord God. Be with them as they travel and watch over them. Finally, we pray uh, that the Lord would strengthen our relationships through this quarantine. The Lord can do miraculous things. So we'll pray that. Lord God, pray that even though we are divided, even though we are separated, even though in some ways we are on top of each other and there's extra stress and burden, pray that even through this quarantine that you would strengthen our relationships with one another. Families brothers, sisters, moms, dads, husbands, wife, 
uh, congregations, co-workers, Lord God, use this to bind us together. Help us to learn to love each other, appreciate each other, be patient with each other, Lord God, and that you would use this for a blessing in our relationships rather than something that would cause us problems. Um, and pray, Lord God, that you would help all of us to get through the coronavirus, that you would bring this to an end quickly, that you would restore normalcy to our lives and to our world, and that you would, uh, that you would, yeah, that, Lord, we commit this to you and ask for your blessing on it. We pray all these things in Jesus' name, who also taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We join in the verse. sisters go in peace live at harmony with one another and serve the lord with joy lord bless you and keep you lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you the lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace Good morning, everyone. Hope that you're all doing okay. Hope you're staying healthy and hopeful in Jesus Christ. Um, hopefully someday soon we'll be able to gather again uh, in person. Until then, pray that the Lord would keep you safe, that the Lord would keep you uh, strong in his word. Um, if you would like a, a visit or communion, let me know. We can set up a time to talk through some things and maybe have the Lord's Supper. If that's, if that's something that you're looking for. Um, otherwise, I don't really have any other announcements other than thank you to our musicians and to my family who helped me out here. And to all of you who are tuning in, pray that the Lord would bless you this next week. We join together in our last song, a song about God's Word. Just one verse, let's stand and join together in God's Word as our great heritage. Mm -hmm. 